So the key for me in the morning is to just become really, really productive, like almost as fast as I can. Like those first 60 to 90 minutes of my day are just so incredibly important to me. But the point is if I don't hit that home run off in the morning, the next 12 hours of my day are just so kind of just off. No one interrupts me in that time. Like no one messes with me in the morning. I have to hit that home run in the morning, and wake up, make my bed, take a shower, meditate, write everything down, get straight to work. But uh, it's not it's not easy per se to wake up at this, you know, 4:45. It's still tired. My I can hear something beeping. My girlfriend's just now waking up. She wakes up at like six. Wake up early. Look, look at all this time. It's so quiet. No one's here to bother me. No distractions. I got music on. I don't even need headphones, but it just takes it to that extra level of just being in the zone, which just really helps me out. Um, and then, you know, there's a few things. Some people like to drink tea in the morning. Some people like to drink coffee. I am that weird guy. I, I like to grab one of those wax candle scented things, put that in my little candle warmer. Smells like cinnamon rolls. I don't, I can't eat cinnamon rolls because they're, <laughs> uh, they remind me of when I was a kid and like things were good and so. Anyways, today we're talking about pair coding. So we're gonna talk about the different applications you can use to pair code, why you'd wanna pair code, how you pair code at work, and all those sorts of things. Thanks for sticking around. Let's jump into this video. What exactly is pair coding? Pair coding is really popular for junior developers. When you first get on the job, you're gonna be pair coding a lot. I'm sure you've already probably done this, maybe if you didn't know exactly what the term was called. That's basically when you get someone to help you out or you help someone else out. It goes both ways and you don't actually have to be in person to do it, which is the whole point of this video. Two IDEs that you can use to do pair coding. So the first one is really popular. Um, it's the one I use on a, it's, it's my daily driver, so to speak. It's Visual Studio Code and then you just get the popular extension called Live Share. And once you download Live Share, you can sign in with a GitHub and you can open a folder and you can click on your little extension and click Start Session, Start Collaboration. And then it gives you a link, it copies it to your clipboard and you paste that to whoever else, right? And they have to also have Visual Studio Code and that extension installed. It's actually a pretty unique little extension it's probably it's it's one of the most popular but probably that and and live share besides like all the popular linting stuff but um for visual studio code that's what i like to use you can see the browser it's kind of like it's kind of like google drive but for coding and i think it's been it's been really helpful patrick and i have done it in a previous video where we we struggle bust through learning python and then there's another popular one called cloud nine Right, this is a service that was bought out by Amazon. It was taken down for a little while and then brought back up um, as an invite only, but now it's open to everyone. So Cloud9 actually runs completely, totally in the browser, totally in Chrome, Firefox, probably not Internet Explorer, let's just be honest. It's just totally in the browser, so you don't actually need to have an IDE, you don't need to have any code locally installed whatsoever. So with Visual Studio Code, you needed to have like Python installed if you're on Windows, Ruby installed if you're on Windows, you need to have all your stuff ready locally, and then you can share the code uh, with the other person who also has Visual Studio Code installed. But with Cloud9, you don't have to have any of that installed. It's just a virtual box, virtual container of a code environment on your browser. So it comes with a terminal, it comes with Ruby, Python, whatever you want. Any language that you can think of, pretty much, is, is on Cloud9. You can connect to GitHub through it. Um, so if you're out and about, and you're using someone else's computer, per se, you can actually still code without having to download a bunch of extra software on their computer. Like, what, what are you doing? Don't download Visual Studio Code. What is this? Like, just go online, go to Cloud9, and then you can share. Uh, they have what's known as workspaces, and then you can make up to a certain amount of workspaces for free, but you can share that workspace link, and then that person, whoever you're sharing it with, the pair code, will come and connect to that workspace and then you guys can work on it together. Uh, you guys can't use the terminal together, like so if one person runs something in the terminal, it won't run it on the other person's end, um, but you can modify the code and stuff. However, you could just communicate with a little with a little message, be like, hey, running terminal real quick, checking to see if this works, no big deal. 
no big deal there. You can also use a few other websites, not specifically for pair coding, but for getting feedback. So, for example, I like to use CodePen a lot. I'll paste a lot of my code or any practice app that I'm working on into CodePen, and then I'll save it, and it gives you a special URL, and then I'll send that URL to my friend, and my friend will review it and make changes, and then he'll save it, and then it'll be like, do you want to save a copy of this? And then he'll make his own copy of it, right? So it's pair coding, but you're both working on your own separate copies. Um, but, you know, if you're communicating back and forth, it's kind of a... And it's kind of an easy way. You don't you don't have to sign up to do it. You can make you can make code pens as an anonymous user. You can also find a lot of inspiration on CodePen because there's a whole bunch of pre-built projects there. I was looking earlier, um, CSS Grid Spider-Man. <laughs> that was pretty cool. There is one caveat to using the Cloud9 workspaces, and that is if you don't use that workspace regularly, they will put it to sleep. And so it takes like three minutes to get it back up. It's kind of like if you use Heroku, Heroku apps go to sleep after a while, or you use Triple Zero Web Host, Triple Zero, Triple Zero Web Host will take your website down and put that down for one hour because it's a free service and they want you to they want you to upgrade. But it doesn't ever go down, right? You can always access it, but if you don't use it long enough, you have to wait an extra three minutes to. No big deal. I'm not gonna pay. Well, me, right? I'm not gonna pay extra. Um, but that's the only thing, right? So if you don't use your workspace for a while, they close it, but you can always get it back. It just takes a minute to get it started up. So one other thing you could do would be pair coding with just screen sharing, right? This is probably just the easiest one you can do, right? Just share your screen, show me what you got, and I'll tell you what to do and point out what to do. Uh, however, that gets really tedious when you're like, move your mouse over here to that div element just to the right. You know, click that button. All right, no, not that. Just move it to the, just move it to the right, just to, no, down. No, it's right. No, which one are you talking about? Um, and that can kind of get, <laughs> get a little tedious, a little fast. But I mean, that's what I did, right? It, Cloud9 wasn't it, it wasn't a thing back then, and then Visual Studio Code didn't have a live server extension. I used uh, the JetBrains IDE, and I don't remember if the JetBrains IDE had a a, a code sharing extension. But you you can always do that if you don't want to deal with any of that. Just have your friends share your screen, or you share your screen. Uh, usually, the problem is you just have to be on a call or some way to communicate with, with that. I actually pair coded a lot with Katie at my first job. We would always hop on a call together and I would always get stuck. It seemed like I was getting stuck a lot more than she was getting stuck. You know, pair coding is core as a junior developer. This is how you learn. I talk about pair coding in my cover letter. Specifically, I, I have a line in my cover letter that says, why can't I think of it? You always take away different tidbits from other people's code. You're like, oh, I would have I would have written that loop differently. It's It's interesting that you wrote it that way, right? And you'll remember these things and then you'll be able to apply them in the future when you're writing your own code. If, if you're not pair coding at your first job, you're gonna be stuck a whole lot and they're gonna expect you to figure out those problems and you're gonna, you're gonna have to do that. You're gonna have to figure out problems on your own when you're stuck. But a good portion of your time as a junior developer should be spent pair coding with other people, which is you know, another kind of reason why remote jobs are so hard to get because you're gonna wanna pair code with people besides the daily stand-up that you're probably gonna re be required to do. That's just not that's just not going to fly with, with everyone. You're going to need to be self-sufficient. You're going to need to be self-starter, self-driven to go and solve those problems. So I hope you enjoyed my little tidbits about pair coding and why it's important and the resources that you can use to do it. If you did, hit that thumbs up button. I would appreciate that. Be sure to check out my website. I actually have the newsletter working now, the second email working. So if you sign up through the little modal, um, you should get an email that you know gives you the discount code for all of my stuff on my website. Uh, it took me a while to figure out how to set that up, so I'm sorry that you guys had to wait. But if you're interested in checking out my website, a lot of good information on there. Uh, I talk about like Treehouse and all of the all the different resources that you can learn online with that aren't garbage. The whole point of my website is to talk about the ones that I don't think are garbage, that have a purpose depending on what skill set you're using, what your time restrictions are, what your budget is, uh, free, paid, free trials, boot camps. All those things, that's what my website's for. So it'd be awesome if you guys check that out. Give me a UX experience, UI experience. There's so much more to creating these websites when you're on your own. Um, so much so much more to it that I made it in WordPress and I feel bad, right? Because I'm a developer, but I made it in WordPress because I'm using e-commerce, a back-end, a front-end, UI, UX, all these API integrations with email. Like, it's just, it's just crazy. So if you guys give me feedback on that. We have a Discord. The link for that is in the description. Got a lot of great people there. Always talking about something. We have a daily chat programming channel for just about every single language you can imagine. Embedded programming, Raspberry Pis, Arduinos, whatever, right? Link for that's in the description. 
would love to have you. And we have the Patreon perks, so I appreciate each and every one of you guys that support this channel. This is my you know, full-time gig, so to speak, when I'm not teaching code. So all the support that you guys give me is just, you know, I try to, I try to make that up with equal value that I provide to you guys. So I appreciate all you guys. So specifically a few individuals because there's a tier for it. You get shout out at the end. We have Craig, Armand, Kyle, Aubrey, Dave, Gary. I appreciate all of you guys. Uh, you can check out my Instagram if you want. I've been making a motivational video every morning. If, 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 you, if you go watch them, I look like I'm, like I just woke up or something else to do with what got legalized in Canada yesterday. Anyways, hope you can find some motivation from that, and thanks for watching this video. I'll see you guys in the next one.